Hi, everyone, and welcome to the PYA Crew Spotlight. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm really pleased to welcome my friend, Chef Brenna Dates. How are you? Excellent, Rhea. Thanks for having me. This is cool. I never get interviewed. This is great. I know. You're running around the world interviewing everybody else. How's that going for you? Really well. You end up learning something every time. I, I love this podcast, and what it, and you're the one that kind of pushed me to do it because I, I didn't want to do it. I was like, ah, it doesn't sound interesting, but thank you. And it's, it's I, like I said, I learn something every time, and I just feel lucky to be connected with really, I think, interesting people that have something to say. Thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. Now, <laughs> let me ask you, how did you get into yachting? Oh, uh, I worked at a very famous hotel in the Florida Keys. It's a Relais, Chate Relais and Chateau, a very exclusive French rating that you need to pay a shitload to be a member of. Um, so I was there as a young and I think I was like 22, 23 by the time I heard about yachting. And then my friend Will became a captain uh, with his wife and she was a chef. So I was a deckhand for, for six months. And then he dropped me off in, in Fort Lauderdale and sent me on my way. Scrub and teak. <laughs> and so that that was sort of what led you into yachting then and what do yeah. you feel yachting has done for your life what what are the major perks for you that yachting has sort of the opportunities that yachting has given you yeah very good question and succinct as well the opportunities because that, that that's what it affords um the opportunity so i've been doing it 20 years and i'd say like and i, I don't want this to sound bad either but it's disposable income and time like you can you can kind of well, it's true though. I mean, you can leave a boat whenever you want. You're not, you're not obligated. You, you don't have a house to worry about. You don't have to move. And uh, so I've used that to travel and see the world. Like I've been riding my world around the motorcycle. Well, let's try that again. I've been riding my motorcycle around the world for off and on for 13 years. And I don't know another profession that I, I could have fit that into, you know? So it's, it's flexibility, I'd say. And I'm just appreciative that every time I look out the window in the galley, it's, I'm seeing something beautiful somewhere different and i think if i were to leave the industry i would i would miss the constant change i, I love that the most plus the crew the crew is awesome there's a bunch of pirates really good fun people and for the future what do you think you see yourself doing like how long do you think that you can continue to be a yacht chef oh very good question i think the writing is on the wall i think i'm getting i'm 44 so i think the i'm getting old for that job it's, it, it's definitely a young man's game uh, I still love it. I, I still want to cook, but I think my future is going to be in galley design and that I can do till I'm much, much older. And that is very useful experience that I have. That's just been built in after 20 years. Like there's things that I just see immediately that I'm like, ah, oh, that's wrong. That needs to be changed. And I just think that is where my path is going. And I'm really excited about it. Like I'm as excited about galley design as I was about joining the industry. And as I was about starting my motorcycle around the world that's how into it i am like i watch these dorks on youtube teach me how to do 3d design on sketchup like that's that's how i fall asleep a lot of times because they're boring as shit but i i, I just want to devour that information to get better at it to get faster to make faster edits and uh and i want to provide a service i want to like start with the drawings and take that all the way through the the multi-year process into the delivery of a galley uh hiring the chefs teaching the chef kind of what the, the thought process and the flow I envisioned in the first place and just bringing good galleys uh, back to the industry because I feel like uh, they get overlooked. Well, That's and this goes, you know, it's interesting <laughs> you said that um, it's a young man's game, but pretty much every position on board, do you believe that yachting gives you sort of the background and the foundation to whenever you decide that you want to leave yachting? Does it open up opportunities on land when that time comes for you to make that decision? Yes, I think so. I think I could also say no, um, but I think that's short-sighted for any yachty to be like, oh, you know, none of these skills translate to the real world. It's like, well, there's a lot of other jobs around yachting that, that you could be a part of, that you could join. Um, I tell all, all greenies when they come in, like, you, you need to have a plan B. You need to have a an idea what to do with your money, what to do with the opportunity of living somewhere and not having to pay the cost of the overhead of human life, which is what a yacht takes care of for you. That's almost built into your salary. Well, it, it is built into your salary. Have a plan B, 
think about something you really want to do and work towards that. Have a goal, really just, but it's, it's hard. I didn't have that. It's good advice. It's not what I did, but <laughs> it's just, it's, it's an alluring industry. It's, it's really fun. You're going to, it's a great lifestyle. I wouldn't do it for 20 years. If I hated it or I was bitter, I, I wouldn't be doing it. It's, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, so that's, a, that's another reason for galley design because I want to stay in it, but maybe not live in a bunk bed anymore. <laughs> For those coming into the industry that look at your career and look at the things that you're doing now, what type of advice would you give them in order to achieve the same sort of goals? Which goals? Well, to be in a place where you can actually say, you know what, it's time to exit the industry. And now I have created um, a reputation that enables me to go on and say that I can do super yacht galley design. Mm. Let's see, advice. I would say challenge yourself as much as possible. Take the jobs that are going to be hard or that you're nervous about, that you're a little bit scared of because of what they may entail or you might not be good enough for it. Uh, be ready to fail. That's part of it. And be ready to pick yourself up and try again because that's you, you learn more from a, a loss than you do from a win. So just keep, keep be on the edge. Just, just keep trying. Uh, and I think the industry will notice that and I think you will get accolades and appreciation even when you do fall flat on your fucking face like it does happen so uh, that's my advice just just try just don't get complacent don't don't stay on a yacht for more than you know four years maximum you get some growth work on a charter boat work on a busy boat grow some skills and what courses would you recommend them take if, if they want to get into becoming a yacht chef specifically? A yacht chef? Just learn how to cook. I don't, I don't know of a course. I, I'm, I'm not a course guy. I'm just really not. Uh, I prefer apprenticeships and stages. Go work somewhere for free. I've done that a few times in my life and that, that, that propels you forward. You, you, you're just inundated with information. If you go as a stagiaire or somewhere, when I'm hiring, I don't give a shit about courses. Uh, I want little bit of danger factor I, you know i want i want someone that works more for free for a couple of years i showed that that commitment that that shows and the the body of knowledge you're getting i can't speak to other walks of life but for cooking it's you got to do it every day and you just don't do it every day in a course i, I went to culinary school myself and i regret it that's a shit that's a waste of money i could have gone some more badass work for two years and just be that much better that much more ahead than making holidays one day in a, in a class like that's not it. It's not what cooking is. Maybe architecture, maybe law. I'm not sure, but it's hands-on and you got to do it every day. The repetition, it's got to get burned in. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> no <laughs> courses. Don't do courses. It's a waste of money. Sorry. Go, 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 go work in a two mission star, one mission star. That's where you learn food. And as far as being a gotcha, you got to know it all from top to bottom, breakfast, all the way through the whole day, lunch and dinner, uh, hors d'oeuvres to 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 desserts and breads you need to know it all so be flexible love food get along with the stews get along with all the crew laugh your ass off have a great time it's it's a, it's a great industry with really fascinating people in it and i think uh i think they'll really enjoy it but nay on the courses let me ask you andre is that before oh, the main meal or after the main meal? <laughs> oh, it's a hot, hot topic. It is French for the start of the meal. It looks a lot like the word enter. So it is not a main course, as North America calls it, as I'm yeah. sure they do in Canada as well. Uh, we, we Americans have, maybe they don't. There's more of a French, French influence in Canada. Yeah, it's really inappropriate. It's a terrible word that way. I had to ask because I saw it on social media the other day as well. And there was that, that whole question going on. And I thought, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I did look it up, of course, but I wanted to see what your yeah. opinion was. Well, I had to look it up too. Chef. I had to look it up too, just to be sure. I'm like, I'm pretty goddamn sure that this is means appetizer. And, and if I see that on a menu, I usually walk out. I know that sounds like a snobby chef thing, but I'm just like, nah, this place is stupid. This, this <laughs> can't work for me. If you use entree as main course, idiots. Well, we're going to make sure to provide your information for those out there that would like to contact you, because I know that you have a lot of great advice to give to those out there that are looking to, you know, get anywhere in, in uh, the industry, um, as well as you've got a show weekly uh, that airs uh, on Yachting International Radio. 
Um, and you yeah, have your own out. YouTube. Yeah, and you've got your own YouTube channel, <laughs> your own Instagram. Uh, so we'll provide those links as well if people want to sort of follow you and see what you're up to. Thanks, Ria. That would be uh, be amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm here for advice too. Like what through those things you just mentioned is, I end up becoming this beacon for it anyway. So I might as well take it on board as a as a free service, within reason. Don't hit me up constantly. Just write a bunch of questions in one email, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you once again. You've been watching another edition of PYA Crew Spotlight. We have been talking to Chef Brennan Dates. Uh, do tune into his show every single week, and uh, we'll provide those links below as mentioned. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next week.